we want to bring in Peter Hayes. He's the head of BlackRock's Municipal Bonds Group. Peter, always great to speak with you. We got that big uh, announcement from the Fed yesterday, I guess comments, I should say, from Fed Chair Jay Powell, just in terms of tapering, when we could potentially expect the Fed to begin tapering, what that timeline could look like, could potentially end middle of next year. What does all this mean for the muni market? Well, hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. Um, I would say uh, munis are a fixed income asset. And when uh, the Fed moves, fixed income assets move. So the munis will move. Uh, the market will, will move up or down, depending on which way interest rates go. The one thing I will say, though, is, is if for those worried about rising interest rates, municipals tend to do much better in a rising rate environment. You can actually look at index returns this year. Most fixed income indices are flat to down. Uh, munis are actually up one and a half percent, has a little bit to do with structure, liquidity, nature of the market, et cetera. So certainly if the Fed tapers, interest rates move up, uh, municipals will be impacted. Today's a good example. Ten-year Treasury is moving up and municipal prices are off a little bit. Peter, I want to ask you about that rising interest rate environment, especially since we're looking at 2022, but also the impact from what could be the passing of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. But I got to ask you about what Fed Chair uh, Powell said yesterday. He, eth under ethic issues, he froze his holding <coughs> of muni bonds when he became chair. But then it seemed in that press conference, he was really knocking muni bonds over the head uh, as if not a great place to be. What did you think when he went there? Uh, th that was a bit baffling, I have to admit. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I think the comment was something around it came to the rescue. The market was about to collapse. The market was not about to collapse. Uh, I think we've, you know, we've seen this before in a couple different environments. The bad one was back uh, around the financial crisis, et cetera. And all markets in those dislocations, they tend to seize up, liquidity goes away, and it impacts prices. But when you look at the resiliency of the market through all of these different sell-offs, and again, you can go back in time, you can go way back to the Merrith Whitney bankruptcy prediction. The market bounces back. Uh, one thing I'll say about state and city governments is they have to have balanced budgets. That's a little bit different than the, the federal government, as you're talking about, et cetera. So um, there is a lot in play for the mini market. I think that that comment was uh, probably you know out, out of context, maybe didn't understand the nature of the market at the time. There was a, a Fed backstop put in place, a municipal liquidity facility. And by the way, only two issuers utilized that. Uh, did it help maybe under, uh, uh, give some confidence to investors in the market at the time? Perhaps. But there were also a lot of other elements to that, including congressional fiscal stimulus. So I, 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 don't, I think that was sort of uh, exaggerated, I would say, in my opinion. Peter, you mentioned state and local finances. Last time we spoke, you actually said that they were in pretty decent shape. Do you think that's still the case? Um, wow, it, it, it's it's just amazing. We take a look at the budgets and where we were, what, you know, April, May of 2020, when we were predicting enormous budget deficits. They've turned the corner. In fact, I would say that a lot of this congressional and fiscal stimulus we've seen still remains unspent. Now, they have to spend it by the end of 2024. But, you know, perhaps that's a bit of an offset to some of the, the fiscal drag that will occur as this dissipates, et cetera. But fundamentally, they've, the, the credit of the municipal market has never really been in better shape. Puerto Rico is coming out of its bankruptcy. A lot of these other entities are running large budget surpluses. General reserve funds are better. So, yeah, I would say we're, we're in better shape than even the last time we spoke. Despite the uh, machinations on Capitol Hill, it's a good bet that $1.2 trillion <laughs> bipartisan infrastructure yeah. bill will get passed. What mm -hmm. are the implications for the muni bond market? And those who are listening to us right now who are thinking, OK, interest rates are going to start going up at some point, so maybe I should be looking to do what? So I, I, I hear Gary Cohen talk about infrastructure and depending on what number you use, $4 trillion, $5 trillion, $6 trillion is what the U.S. needs to spend on new infrastructure and repairing existing, et cetera. It's a big number. No one market is going to solve for all that. I heard him talk about public-private partnerships, infrastructure banks are another element of that. Uh, but the municipal market is a very large, liquid source of low-cost funding for issuers. It has been for a long time at the $4 trillion market. It will be part of that solution over time. And again, these infrastructure bills play out over a number of years. It's not a one-shot deal. So we're likely to see some increasing issuance over time. And to sort of answer your final point about what to do now, the market is a little bit overvalued. You know, one of the components here is that will taxes go up? The marginal tax rate for individuals might go up to 39.6. 
the market is factoring in a much higher tax rate right now. And a lot of that is around interest rates, strong demand, low supply, et cetera. But nonetheless, it's a little overvalued. So it might be a time to just wait on the sidelines, see if some of this infrastructure issuance comes to fruition and find a better entry point.